Hey guys, I'm Elizabeth Lopez and um, I wanted to do something a little bit different today. So I wanted to do a story time and tell you guys about um, how I left my government job and became an entrepreneur. So this is kind of like the beginning of my career and um, yeah, I know there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there. I was actually recently speaking at an event. The event was called WIP um, and it was amazing. I had the best time. It was I was speaking on a panel with um, other entrepreneurs and um, to a group of women. So the women were all, it seemed like kind of like up and coming millennials and I was so excited with all of their questions and their energy and you know, it was a pretty big like club night in Toronto. I can't remember what was going on. It was like some big weekend, but all of these young women were here to listen to us about um, starting your own business. So um, it kind of just kind of got me excited about sharing some information on that. So I thought I would tell you guys about um, when I quit, when and how I quit my kind of cushy government job to become an entrepreneur. So here we go. Um, and I'll just quickly just for those of you that don't know me, um, now my business, just so you know, is um, I own a, a workout. It's called Hourglass Workout. Um, I initially started it and um, I now partner with my husband and uh, we have a a large gym in downtown Toronto so fourth biggest city in the world and it's the second trendiest neighborhood in the world as voted by Vogue magazine is where our gym is um, which is kind of cool just, just saying. <laughs> um, we have um, 14 locations here in Canada and then there's also locations in the US and the UK um, and I also have a um, you know a good online training business as well I guess I could call it successful um, which I adore I love my little TWL team um, and I'm working on more projects now but um, but you know I've moved to a place where I'm not saying we're like the biggest and best entrepreneurs but we you know we, we live off it we do well we're very happy and we have an amazing team um, like great 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 team not just me and my husband we have a team which I like love you guys so much but anyways so I will tell you how I got from working at the city to quitting with the city to getting to where I am today I think I'm gonna do this in a couple of parts I think that this um, part I'm just gonna talk about the initial leaving and and starting so just kind of going from the government to to getting it on its feet and um, I think I'll separate it into maybe like four different parts just because not everyone will be interested in all the different segments or if you are you just might not want to listen to me talk for that long that too so so here we go um, so I started out um, I have a background in um, and basically like kinesiology and fitness and um, recreation um, that's what I, I studied school in, in nutritional sciences and holistic nutrition. So um, I was a kid that grew up in the rec center system. So meaning I spent almost all of my hours at the rec center hanging out. And my goal, because um, I just loved my, my recreationist, Fabi and, you know, Sandra. I had really amazing recreationists, which were the people that ran the community centers where I used to hang out like all night. Um, so I wanted to be a recreationist when I grew up. So um, so in addition, I went to, to college and I did um, recreational leisure services with Jim Bodak, who was like the bomb professor, FYI. Anyways, so I did that and I became um, probably one of the, or the youngest um, recreationist. I was hired um, as a full-time recreationist right out of school and I wasn't even finished school yet when I passed the exam and everything and, and was signed on and had my own community center that I ran. And I have to say, I I literally adored that job. Like, I loved it. I worked with the community. I worked with youth. I was a re youth outreach worker. Um, I got to make a difference every day and feel, like, so good about, you know, getting to do things with these kids. Um, and I just loved it. And I did that job for a long time. Um, I'd started with the city from, like, when I was 14, teaching gymnastics. And then I taught aerobics when I was 16. And... I've, I've always been a rap girl, so, you know, then I got my job, like, right out of school. Um, so I was there for a long time, and I absolutely loved that job. While I was doing that job, I also um, personal trained on the side um, and taught fitness classes and stuff like that, and I loved that as well, and I was also competing as a um, fitness model. So I was competing in, in uh, fitness competition shows, and I was competing as a pro, 
um, and additionally judging shows. I, I always have like five jobs at least, just FYI. <laughs> I've been that way since I was like seven. Um, so I was, uh, I was competing and I was teaching these workshops on how to walk and pose. Um, I was like, uh, I think, um, what was her name again? Mm, I can't remember. She's in um, Florida, but there was, there was one girl before me that taught walking and posing and I think I was kind of the second person to do it. Kathy Savage. Kathy Savage was the first. I think I was the second person and I would lead workshops here in Toronto and people would travel in to take them and everything um, and I would get girls ready for shows and I would train them for shows. I would teach them how to walk and pose and that was my thing um, initially was, was uh, show prep outside of working for the city. So that was my side hustle and I was competing and everything and um, eventually with my city job I got a promotion okay and my promotion was go to the um, city hall and when I was at city hall all of a sudden I was no longer working with youth I was no longer working with the community uh, community they knew I also had a fitness background um, and had studied that in school so I was now doing policy writing for fitness and basically I was I was on a computer and, and typing and I was I was a paper pusher so I absolutely hated I hated my job so much like did not like it. It was it was literally what went from being something where I would spend way more than the eight hours required because I loved it so much. I moved to City Hall and saw the bureaucracy and I hated that. Um, I already didn't like the budgeting and stuff. But that's another that's another story. Um, I'm very pro youth and pro youth, you know. So there was some stuff I saw that I didn't like. Let's not go there. Anyway, so I did not like my job. So when I was competing, um, I was one of the first pro fitness models um, in the history of the sport, and they wanted to do, the federation that I trained with, they wanted to do a Liza with Lopez classic show, so I was like, yeah, that's amazing. Um, so we did this Liza with Lopez classic show at the CNE, which was pretty cool. It's a pretty big place here in Toronto. Um, and uh, at the same time, I was also doing my side hustle, my personal training. I did out of, um, a de uh, I'm not going to say the name, out of a gym uh, in Toronto. So I had those two side hustles. And when I was doing this classic show, they were just like, you know, this is going to take a lot of work. And I know that you don't love, love your job right now. Like, why don't you take a little sabbatical and really like work on this and really go in on it and see if you like it. So I was just like, oh, well, that's a really interesting idea. I hadn't really thought about that type of thing before. Um, I knew that when I was at my job, I was always doing extra work, like creating events and stuff like that, because I just, I just like doing stuff. Um, so when she said that, I'm like, okay, let me ask. And I asked, and they said no. So I was just like, okay, well, they said no. Um, so I was talking to my friend Carlotta, and she's like, well, why don't you look and see if there's other ways of doing it? And I looked, and there was. You could kind of only take part of your pay and have part of it held off or whatever and then you could choose to be off for a while while you use that pay um, so I decided to try to do that um, and then eventually they actually said no okay we will give it to you and I was just like okay cool um, but I would be off for six months with zero pay and I was like okay uh, okay, so maybe, um, and I, I did it, I was just, I was scared, I was just like, whoa, I'm gonna not be at my regular job that I've been at, you know, I've been working for the city since I was 14, um, and at least in school and working and then full-time working, so that was kind of crazy, but that was step one, was saying, okay, I'm gonna do this six months with no pay because I've got this event coming up and I've got this, um, you know, the side hustle of, of doing my PT here and then I've also got my, my fitness model camps that I do. So, um, long story short, and I don't wanna, you know, hurt anyone's feelings or anything, but um, the event, there was hundreds and hundreds of athletes that came out and dancers and everybody, um, things happened and nobody got paid, including myself, so, so there is that. So I was off already three months and expecting this payout and that didn't happen. <laughs> so I was just like, oh my God, welcome to the world of entrepreneurship. Um, and then at the same time, the gym that I worked at, um, had I didn't know that they were struggling, but um, again, I had no income whatsoever. And then I kept asking them, I'm like, guys, like, are you going to pay me? Are you going to pay me? And next thing I knew, um, they'd kind of snuck out in the middle of the night and the gym shut down. 
So I was sitting there, uh, I think this was three months into being off, and I now had <laughs> no money from the city, no money from the event, and no money from my personal training. So I was just like, whoa, like that's, that's just crazy. Like that was quite an eye opener to what can happen like off the get go in the world of entrepreneurship. Yeah. So I'm going to turn this light up a bit. Light, light. There you go. Um, so that was a little bit of a wake up call and the only income I had was doing my fitness model prep classes. Um, and I thought to myself, okay, I could kind of like put my tail between my legs and go back to the city after three months and just say, hey, can I come back? Like, I know you've replaced me for a minute, but can I come back? Um, I didn't really want to do that. And I also didn't want to be a personal trainer. Like, I'd already been a personal trainer in like high school <laughs> and college. Um, so I was just like, I, I didn't quit my, not quit, but I didn't leave my job to personal train. Um, I did have a waiting list though because like I said I got girls ready for shows I'd helped a lot of girls become pros um, so I, I had this waiting list of girls that wanted to to train with me um, so I was just like okay maybe I could do like a camp of like a bunch of girls together and I could prep them at the same time you know and I was talking to another girlfriend of mine and she was just like oh yeah yeah absolutely I'll come out I'll bring like 15 of my friends, like 100%, like just start next month. So I was just like, okay, <laughs> let's give this a go and just see what happens. So um, I came up with the name Hourglass Workout and um, I bought the domain for it, even though I didn't know anything about websites or anything yet. Um, but I bought the domain and um, I started to make like flyers and stuff and I opened up that next month. and. Um, not only did my friends, friends not come, but she didn't come. <laughs> so luckily I'd done a little bit of promoting myself, um, and I got seven girls out. So I had those, you know, those girls that were kind of like in the city and on the wait list. So they all came out to that, that first class. Um, and even though it was small and even though, you know, a lot of chips are not falling in a row, I had like the best time ever. It was a lot of work. It was like, it was a lot of work. Um, but I, I kind of loved it, so I was just like, okay, this is this is pretty cool, um, and I, I thought, okay, I need to actually really start promoting this. So um, I went to Apple, and at the time, I don't know if they still offer this or not, but they had these one-on-one -on -one sessions. So I got in there at least once a week, and I would try to sneak in to get in there because you're only allowed once a week, but somehow I managed to like get in twice a week every so often um, and I would um, each time I would do a lesson so um, I would learn iWeb how to how to make a website so I built my first hourglassworkout.com website with like PayPal and everything and and built that site I built my first lizabethlopez.com um, so I was managing and building both of those and created the emails and all of that kind of stuff, which was just absolutely new to me. I was a government girl, you know, like I worked for the city, I had assistants and staff and everything like that. Like I ever saw like 40 staff when I worked for the city. Um, so I had people to do that stuff and I was just like, mm. <laughs> I was very confused. I was in like a whole new space. Um, I had to learn basics of graphics and stuff. I didn't have budget. Like there was, there was no budget to be seen to do this. Um, so I was my own graphic designer, I was my own assistant, I was my own web designer, um, you know, I customer service, everything. So so uh, it was it was a big learning experience, but I have to say there was this one job, I, I've always had five jobs by the way, so this one job that I had when I was in school, which was working for, uh, which one was that? Red, Red Lobster? No. Uh, the steakhouse. Anyways, I can't remember. The keg. It was the keg. Um, so I worked at the keg and the one lesson that I really loved um, that I learned when I worked there was your very first, I can't remember if it was like your first three days or something like that, you have to spend a shift with each different area of the restaurant. So I think, I don't remember the order, but I think the first shift I worked, a whole shift with the bartender, right? So before I was even allowed to waitress there. So the first shift was with the bartender and I saw everything they did, everything they went through, when they were slammed, what it looked like. Then I worked um, with the bussers and I did the busing. Um, and then I worked with the, um, the cook staff and then I worked with the manager. And literally, I think it was like a week before I was actually on the floor serving, but the best thing, I just thought it was so cool. 
um, the best thing was when I was waitressing and it was slammed because I worked lunch lunches mostly because I had to go back to school. Um, uh, when I was waitressing, it was like if something was backed up or something, I knew why and I knew what they were going through and I really had a sense of what each person in the restaurant, you know, had going on. And that was like just one of the best business lessons along the way that I've learned is just to see what everyone else has to do so that, you know, you just have a better understanding of the of the rules. So when I started my own business, having to be the web designer and the graphics person and the, you know, promoter and the teacher and the scheduler and the assistant and everything. Now, like later on in life now when I have when there's different people doing all of those roles, um, I know I know kind of what it takes to do all of those, not what it takes to do them, but kind of like, you know, why things might take longer or what struggles they might go through. So that is one tip for my entrepreneurs out there is just to, you know, no matter how high you are up, it's good to know what's going on and how to do each area. But anyways, so <laughs> when I started out, um, I had to figure out all this stuff. So I was, um, I was literally, if I wasn't teaching, I was out at like different clothing stores, leaving flyers there, going to um, different businesses and saying, hey, like, can I come and do a lunch and learn with you? And, you know, maybe you guys want to come and check out my program and trying to figure out free weeks and being on social media and taking videos and putting them and, you know, just kind of like nonstop trying to hustle and just get the word and the name Hourglass out there. So I was, I was doing my hustle. Um, so when the six months came up eventually, um, that I, you know, my, I was only supposed to be out for six months. So when six months eventually came up, I remember my friend Carla just saying to me, so like, are you coming back or not? And, um, cause she also worked with the city with me and I was just like, dude, I don't know. Like I'm kind of liking this, but that's a government job. Like that is pension and good pay and unlimited like physio and Cairo and, you know, dental and massages and just, you know, like, and security, you know, vacation time, um, maternity leave, like all these things that I would not have <laughs> sick days, like all of these things that I just don't have as an entrepreneur, just running a little boot camp, you know, and on top of that, like this was just a boot camp, you know, like I didn't have my own location. I was renting space in someone else's gym. What if that gym shut down? What if um, boot camps weren't trendy anymore? What if, um, you know, someone else just with more money just copies my idea and just takes all my clients? What if I get injured? Like, there was just, like, a million what ifs. But I had just gotten started, and, you know, if, if, I, would, if I was going back to a community center, I don't know, I, I might have gone back because I really liked my community centers. But because I was going back to the government building that I didn't like, I was just like, you know what, um, can you help me and see if I can get a further extension? Can I do a full year? Another six months. So there was a lot of no's until eventually it became a yes. I don't remember how we turned that no into a yes, but somehow I managed to extend it to a year. So I was like, okay, I've got six more months and that's probably it. Like at the end of that six months, I don't think they're going to let me stay off longer. So I have to really go in and make sure that this is something that I want to do and something I'm going to be able to be successful at. So um, the next thing that I started to do was I started to try to find trade shows and trade shows are really expensive. Like they're like three, four thousand dollars. Like they'll charge you eight hundred dollars to use their internet and they'll block your internet, by the way. So you're just like, well, I'm not going to buy the internet. I have my own internet. So they block it. Uh, so just to get tables and tablecloths and carpets and so everything's an extra, like nothing's included. So I realized I cannot afford trade shows back then. Um, so I was looking for small trade shows, which I found and I found little local things. I found one called um, the What Women Want show, which was by my friend Shanae, and girl, that was such an amazing event. I wish you would bring that back again. It was like, bomb. Um, but anyways, so I did the what, what Women Want event, which was just like, you know, local women, everyone wore dresses, and let me tell you, like, you learn as you go, okay? <laughs> so... I showed up to this, um, this What Women Want event, and it was, it was trade show style, and I showed up with me and business cards. <laughs> I think that was it. 
So everyone else had these. I'm watching, and they're just like, "Okay, set up time is da da da." And I'm just like, "Oh, okay. Well, I don't, I don't know what I need to set up." Um, and when I got there, everyone had backdrops and and display cases, and I'm just like, "Oh my god, I feel like such a flipping." <laughs> Me and my business card. So I sat down at my booth. <laughs> I was done, like I had nothing to set up at all. Um, I felt really stupid. <laughs> but once I got over feeling stupid, I realized I'm here, I have an opportunity. I'm here, so I'm just going to talk to people. And I did, and even without all the fancy stuff, um, you know, I just kind of moved the table and just brought chairs over and just made it like a little social area. And I just, just sat down and talked to girls and we talked them about fitness and stuff. And I got a lot of new clients and I got a lot of amazing clients like, um, Siobhan, Mary, Carrie, I'm pretty sure that you guys all came from the What Women Want show. And, um, it was, it was great. It was, it was an amazing event. And the next time I came the following year, I did have some backdrops. And so I learned from that mistake. I didn't want to feel stupid like that again. But, um, but I still took that opportunity and I got people to, to come in and, and be a part of it and build that business. Um, I found that the biggest thing that helped build my business was word of mouth. I mean, I used social media, I used Facebook, I made flyers, I put them outside, I gave out flyers, I did all that stuff. But the number one thing was word of mouth. When you care and you like, it's your baby, it's your business, um, you'll you'll really you'll you'll put 100 in and people will see that and and it was just referral after referral after referral um i had one class in the morning and one class at night i'll tell you what my day looked like actually my day looked like i would get up i would have pt clients a personal training client at six i would teach a class and then i would have probably like four or five more personal training clients i would teach another class um and then i would have another personal training client and then repeat um it was I was tired. Like I remember my last client of the night, which would be from like nine until ten p.m. when the gym would shut down. <laughs> I would be like, like that, like just like trying desperately to keep my eyes open, and I felt so bad. Um, but you know, these two girls they wanted to compete in a show, and they were hourglass girls, so I was just like, okay, I'll open up another slot for you. I was beat, beat up, um, but I kept going, and at the same time, um, I didn't understand systems yet. So I was doing everything individually and by hand. So um, so I wrote each diet individually. And when I only had like seven girls, it was fine. But when I had like 30 girls to write 30 individual diets based on that person's questionnaire, I was up to like two, three in the morning. And then I had a client at like six writing the diets and then feeling so terrible that the girls were getting them like a week, two weeks late. Um, because they were handwriting. Um, luckily, every single girl, no one ever, like, I think when they know that you're not, you know, chilling, you're really, like, trying to help them, nobody ever got upset that they didn't get their diet on time. Everyone was just like, okay, I, I know, it's all right. <laughs> they knew I was, I was working. They knew that I, I cared. And that was the main thing, is that I really, I really did care about them a lot. I still do. This is my booze, my originals. My, we call them HGOGs. I got them all like dog tags that say HGOG <laughs> on it. Hourglass original gangsta. <laughs> anyway, um, we still show love. And um, yeah, so so building that business from, from ground up, um, it was really important to kind of make sure everyone in that program was loving what's happening because those referrals are everything. Um, and then the local stuff was really important. So I remember just like not even realizing how quickly it was growing and just showing up one day and being like, oh my God, there's 50 girls in here. Like, I can't teach 50 girls. This isn't even safe. Um, and I just looked at them and I said, okay, who wants to come tomorrow at six and who wants to come at seven? <laughs> and we just split the group into two. And that was how I first started to actually grow the classes. And eventually it was um, two classes in the morning and two classes at night. Um, and even eventually I had to cut off the personal training which was like the hardest thing to do I love I love personal training um, because you really have more of that one-on-one -on -one. you get to really see you know them progress and everything like that but I actually had to um, stop personal training because hourglass was growing so much and I needed to write those diets 
<laughs> those individual diets um, and and I needed to grow it um, so eventually this is where I actually decided I don't even remember it's every this is years ago so I don't remember the exact order of the way things happen but I remember deciding eventually I need an assistant like I'm dying here I, I have like a thousand email, literally a thousand emails behind I'm like 20 diets behind and I have to teach for 10 hours tomorrow so I, don't, <laughs> I could just stop sleeping um, so that's a good problem to have that meant you know it was definitely growing and things were good so I hired a virtual assistant that was my first staff person ever and I was just like oh my god I have a staff person <laughs> I was like so excited um, so I hired um, this girl Robin from where was she New Jersey I want to say um, and she was great she was, she was excellent and it was it was such a godsend oh my god um, so she would answer like all the emails and stuff like that. And at first I was, you know, when you have your own business and it's just your baby, you are so scared to have anyone else do anything, touch anything. Cause you're just like, Oh, no one can do it better than me. Cause they don't, they don't know my girls. They don't, but they, they can, you just need to find the right person and you need to, you need to take the time to train them and, and let them know what's important to you and, and they will be able to do it. But that as an entrepreneur, it's a really hard thing to grasp that someone else is going to be handling my clients and stuff like that. But it was one of the best decisions and in a right direction. Um, so Robin came on and she handled that stuff. Um, and the team now is like, it's, it's a big and amazing I love my team I love my team um amazing team so we started there I don't have Robin anymore Robin if you're watching what's up <laughs> but um yeah so that was the first person that I brought on um from there like fast forward um to a year where like the big decision lied my friend Carlotta again so my friend Carlotta worked for the, for the city as well she still does um, and she was just like, hey, she's like, I know they want to know what you're doing. Are you coming back? And um, I was just like, dude, I, I really don't know. Like, I'm loving what I'm doing. But there's still, there's all those what ifs. Like, what if I get pregnant? I can't teach class and be pregnant. I can't afford to have a full-time instructor. You know, if I was at the city, I had mat leave. And I could, I could have a litter of kids if I ever wanted to. And they would cover me every single time. What if I break my leg? What if I get sick? Like all of these what ifs start coming back again. What if the business goes under? What if the gym shuts down? And I'm just like, so I sat with Hubs and, and we talked about it. And I talked with Carlotta and she, she said to me, she said, you know what? She said, I'm going to write your letter of resignation and I'm going to email it to you. And she said, if you want to, you just hit send. And I was just like, oh, I still feel like I could feel the emotions coming back right now. I was just like, oh my God, like, because there's no going back. When you work for the city, there's seniority. Once you quit, your seniority is gone. I will never get that job back. back. So it wasn't like, well, I could always go back. No, that door would it close. Done. Someone else has that role. Someone, the lineup has become like <laughs> thousands of people long again. Um, so I sat there and I just remember just like I, I really I knew in my heart that I wanted to stay with Hourglass but it was a big decision and I remember hitting send on the email that Carlotta did for me which thank god because I wouldn't have been able to put that together myself at all it was just like and then I threw up actually ran to the bathroom <laughs> threw up because that's when you're just like this is like this is it like this is now this is this is on me and this has to be successful like this isn't just like a one foot in and one foot out anymore this is like this is all in um and I think that that's I think it's a good thing um I'm really glad I left in the first place actually but you know you know um but once you go all in, you, you have no choice but to go like straight ham. And, and I did. And it, it built and it built and it built and it built. Um, I would say my, my advice for people out there, if you're like really trying to decide and you're just like, um, you know, like I have this dream, 
but you know, I need this day job or, you know, and, and that day job could be like me. It could be what you went to school for. It could have been your original calling. Um, or it could be a job that you just hate anyways. And you're just like, how do I get started? Um, I would say if, if you are trying to make that decision, just know that becoming an entrepreneur, it's, it's, um, it's very, very different than having that nine to five where someone pays you and you get that paycheck and you do what you're told. You create what it's supposed to be. You create your day and your day could be anything. I mean, my day could be sitting at a computer all day, um, writing blogs. It could be, um, learning to do my makeup for tutorials for, for stuff. It could be being in Miami, talking with sponsors. It could be, um, teaching classes all day. It could be writing workouts. It could be editing manuals. Like every day brings something different. And if that's something that you thrive on, then that could be something for you. But you're the one creating what needs to be done. Also, there's no one saying to you like, okay, you need to have this on my desk by this time. And that you need to be highly motivated. You need to have drive. You need to have goals. Um, and you need to be able to kind of put, you know, okay, here's where I am now. Here's where I want to be. Here's the steps that I need to get there. Um, and I need to be consistent at it. And some people think they can do it. And then when they realize it's, it's a lot of work, like it's a ton of work. Like again, I had to learn to be a web designer, teacher, you know, like just everything. <laughs> um, so if you feel like you're ready to do that, it's such an amazing experience. Um, I love, I love being an entrepreneur so much. I love that I can create my destiny. Um, I, I just think it's the best thing ever. I've had a lot of really tough lessons along the way. I'd like to do um, some other parts to the series that, because you know I don't want this to go too long, but um, you know I'd like to do one that I'll call the day that I lost one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. That did happen just a couple of years <laughs> after making that initial um, leave um, where I lost everything that I'd made and had to decide if I was going to continue and, and kind of how that happened and how I overcame it. And, um, and just also another one I'd like to do on, on franchising, so how we decided um, as a team, because by this time I now had a team, um, on how we decided to franchise and, and how we did the franchise and kind of how that all works and just like ups and downs and that type of thing. So anyway, so that was my first story time. Yay! <laughs> um, I hope you guys liked it. I hope that um, you learned a little bit from it. And um, I'm not really sure what people's questions are, so I'm just kind of going on. This was my initial experience of the box of how I went from this job to this job. Um, so if you have questions that you'd like to kind of see included on the next video, because like I said, I'll, I'll try to do at least two more that just kind of give you a little bit of an inkling on how I built, or how my team and I built this business, um, then leave a comment below. And um, yeah, that's it. Um, I also have my YouTube channel, put out lots of different videos, fitness, nutrition, all that kind of good stuff, another part of this role. Um, so I'd love it if you check those out, subscribe, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Peace out. Thanks, guys.